Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to six things that we learned from Bradford City for MK Dons nil. You did not hear me wrong there. Bradford City actually won a football match of 4 nil, and it wasn't a dream. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for us. If you could try 80 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We're on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so, and it does massively help out. I'll get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below on our six talking points that we do want to discuss in today's video. I am once again joined by Corbin and we'll start out then with box number one. It's a green box. Surprisingly, it is a green box for Jonathan Tompkinson. Absolutely outstanding yesterday. I think especially in that first half, there was maybe three or four times where the ball got played in behind and it looked like we were in real danger of maybe conceding. Tomkinton's pace to recover and win the ball back was absolutely outstanding. And it wasn't just that in the game, although that was very, very influential for us. His tackling was brilliant. Going forward as well, provided quite a lot. Had a big part to play in our first goal. Obviously, door crosses the ball in and it's Tomkinson with... A touch from a centre-half, which isn't too bad. He whips the ball, and I think it does take a slight deflection before coming to Matty Platt, but it's still you know, a very good play from a centre-half to be that high up the pitch. You've got to give him massive credit, and I just feel like overall, again, another very, very solid performance. There's been some debate on social media over the last few weeks, and obviously after last night as well, who is better, Tomkinson or Critchlow? I think, for me personally, there's not really much contest, and it is Jonathan Tomkinson. I feel like defensively better. He's probably better on the ball as well, which I feel like like is quite a good thing because Critchlow was a pretty decent ball playing centre half. You know, he's very tall, he's strong, commanding, and I feel like his size maybe gets a little bit underplayed because of how big in terms of units our other centre halves are. And I feel like defensively he's very, very solid. But that pace that he had last night, two, three, four times in that first half was absolutely outstanding to recover. Second half, obviously, he's on the opposite side to me. So once I noticed him as much, but he still had a pretty positive game. Certainly a man of the match contender because I feel like in the first half when there was more pressure on, it's obviously a little bit harder to perform and you're a little bit more scared to make mistakes. But Tomkinson defensively was absolutely incredible yesterday. So 100% deserves a green box. Yeah, he took me breath away in the first half and helped us just retain MK Dons and keep them at arm's length. Like I say, his, his recoveries with all the top through balls from MK, they, they played through the midfield and when Platt and Kelly pushed forward and maybe missed out and they looked like they were 2v1 or 1v1 through on goal, Tomkinson had come out of nowhere and make a brilliant last-ditch tackle. And on the ball, like I say, for, for the goal, he was important in Platt's goal, breaking into a box, which is something we we haven't seen a lot of under previous managers, you know, players committing to the box and, uh, you know, your centre-backs overlapping, if you like. Did it come from a throw-in? I think so, or was yeah. It down the, yeah, throw-in. So, you know, that's that's what you, you want to see. You want to see players commit forward and get overloads on the opposition. And, you, you know, that's what we did really well against MK Dons and, and they really struggled against that. And Tomkinson at the back, we rock solid again. And like I say, Physically, probably gets underrated because of how physical and dominant the other three, the, the other four centre backs are, and that's um, you know that's credit to him because he still stands out. And he still um, you know m dominates his strikers. I think the good thing about Tomkinson as well is because of his physique and build, he's more than comfortable in playing in a lot of positions on the pitch as well, which is rare for a centre half to be able to play in a number of roles. You know, if he had to play as a midfielder, certainly as a number six, I don't think that would be the end of the world. I think he could easily do a job at wing back as well. Being really impressed with Tomkinson, and it's crazy how we think back to he couldn't get a kick in a Matt Q system, which was playing out from the back, where Ash Taylor could, Matty Platt could, in terms of build up playing out from the back, playing short goal kicks. It's really, really baffling to me. You can certainly see why the club battled so hard during the summer to get him in through the door on loan. Fingers crossed we can get him in on a permanent deal. I think, obviously, if you get promoted, that would be... Um, would make it much more likely because I do think he's League One quality. Again, he couldn't really get much of a kick last season at Stevenage and I don't really understand why because he's proven in his Bradford City time so far he's a very, very good centre-half at this level. I don't know how long he's got left on his contract with Norwich, but fingers crossed we can get him in on a permanent deal in the summer. So we'll move on then to box number two. It's another green box. I think for the first time this season, it is a green box for Clark Adore. Now, at points in the game, yes, he had some bad spells. Defensively, he needs to do better. He switches off sometimes. And there was a back pass as well in the first half where 
He was nearly on the halfway line and he tried to pass it back to Matty Platt. It was marked by their striker. And it, I don't think he meant to do it, but it put us under a lot of pressure. And defensively, Adore does switch off at times and that is quite frustrating. But going forward, we finally saw what we think we've signed in Clark Adore, taking players on, getting balls into the box and not just taking the easy pass. Because I feel like when the starting 11 came out and everyone saw Adore was back in the side, I feel like there was a lot of disappointment, obviously, because he hasn't really proven so far in a Bradford City shirt why he should be getting picked week in, week out. A lot of people saying he might be the next Osadibe and saying they don't really understand why he's getting picked. He must be an excellent trainer, all that sort of stuff. And I completely get that because Adore in games for me so far hasn't really offered too much. He looked okay in the first few games of the season against Crawley and Colchester, but hasn't really done much since yesterday, though, against MK Dons. I'm pretty sure he was involved in all four goals. He puts the original cross into the box for Matty Platt's goal. For the second goal, he picks up the ball off a cut, gets 1v1 against his man and doesn't cut back and try a pass. He gets at him, he cuts inside, gets the shot off, and I think the keeper saves it onto the post. And obviously, Kavanagh is there to tap home. The third goal is brilliant play from him on that right-hand side, and Halliday battles well to get the ball into the box. Gilead obviously hits the post and Cook finishes it nicely. And then a Door finally gets his goal. Brilliant battling play between Kavanagh, Cook, and the door. The ball eventually drops to Clark Adore and it's an excellent turn and he shoots so quick that it kind of catches the keeper off guard. I think it's MJ Williams then, number six, was getting completely twisted up by Clark Adore and he had a really, really good game going forward. Yes, at times he could do better defensively, but when we've won 4 0, it would be very harsh for me to come on here and criticise Adore too much and give him a yellow box. So I feel like it's got to be green. He had a big part to play in all four goals. Unfortunately, I don't think he actually gets a registered assist in the match, but he's had a big part to play in it. And if he keeps performing like that, I don't think many Bradford fans are going to have a problem with him being in this side. But we've been mentioning it for weeks and months now. He needs to offer more end product. He needs to get at players, take them on, get shots off, get balls into the box. And sometimes it's not going to work. He might overhit a cross or he might shoot well over the bar, but it's much better to do that. And I would rather my wingers be doing that than passing it backwards and making the safe passes to your midfielders or your wing backs. So for me personally, I thought I had an excellent game going forward yesterday and deserves a green box for me. Yeah, he, sh he definitely showed why Alexander's persisted with him. And I'm a bit deflated looking at the team news and seeing Odran, you know, you, you see point and not getting involved again. Wilson, I don't think you're on the bench again. And you, you do feel like you, you've been given so many chances and you haven't really took them, but to, to, yesterday you did. And it's exactly the performance you want to keep seeing. I suppose one thing, looking at it tactically, why Alexander might have gone with Odra over some others, like your Chapmans and your Pointons, is because pace-wise, you know, we're playing on the break and uh, Tomlinson, their left wing back, we're leaving a lot of space out there. And Odra sort of playing, he likes to have uh, Kavanagh and Odra, your two sort of tens wingers, as tens to get closer to Cook, so in isolated. Whereas Odra took more of a space out on the right side um, but when Kavanagh, and that was to try and exploit their, their side down, down at left side because Mike Williamson plays a really good expansive style of play. But if you do get your balance right with your press like we did yesterday, you do get space in behind and we exploit that with odd round. Like we want to see, get 1v1 with your man, get it on your preferred foot and then get a quick shot off or get a quick pass or away instead of just killing the momentum and slowing the game down with the fake shots and the fake passes that we've seen over his time at City so far. So that was something that I liked. And it, it, he's, always, he's a player, like I said, on Saturday, you know, quite nonchalant, quite, you know, uh, lazy in his in his play. But it, it, it was effective last night because it was a more composed um, style of play. You know, some, sometimes it does that and it's just a, a lazy little pass back. But, in terms of the um, the effect it had in terms of that with the composure, it allowed him to get his, his goal um, by taking his time with, with a strike and it gave us a few chances as well. I think he played the most um, accurate passes in the game. I think he only misplaced one pass, which helped us to retain the ball when and helped us to get out instead of just, you know, like we've seen maybe a month ago, just to up to Cook. So it was a good game. And hopefully we can see him kick on because, like I say, you know, he's not had many games where you can give him a green box.
Yeah, I think when you're playing on the counter-attack, you need intensity and you need direct play from your front three. And finally, Odoa showed that because there's been so many times this season where he's got the ball in a wide area, he's either got 1v1 or got an opportunity to cross or shoot, and he just cuts back and plays a simple pass or he tries too much and does too many fake shots where at times you've just got to cut in on that left foot and get a shot off because goalkeepers at this level, not many of them are good enough to be able to catch everything, especially from shots around the edge of the box. So I feel like we need to shoot more and Odwa certainly got that spot on yesterday. So like you say, definitely deserves that green box. We'll move on then to box number three. It's yet another green box, this time for Alex Gilead. Playing out of position, but you probably wouldn't be able to notice. I thought he was absolutely excellent playing at left wing back. I thought Alexander got that spot on going with Gilead there rather than, rather than Liam Rydag. I thought when he came on, he struggled a little bit at wing back for me. I just don't think he's good enough. You know, he's not really got that quality that we need anymore, but the game was done at that point. So I didn't really mind it all too much. But Gilead at wing back provided the legs and energy that we needed in that position when we were going for pretty much a full press against MK Dons, trying to really restrict their passing style. Gilead was going to be key for us. And it was great to see him get another start in the game and the intensity that he shows. You know, he goes from minute one to minute 100 or whatever you play to in every single match. He's absolutely outstanding. He shows great quality on the ball. Defensively, didn't look too bad as well, to be fair. I don't really think he got caught out of position which is quite good for Gilead considering the amount of different positions that he's played. He's a bit like Tomkinson. He could probably play pretty much anywhere. I'd certainly do a shift for you. And Gilead deserves massive credit. I feel like the the passion, the commitment that he shows. I think he did an interview midweek speaking about how much he's lo he, he has loved his time at the club so far. And he just loves being here. And it's a big part of his career. I think he's only had a few senior years really away from the club, maybe two years at Scunthorpe. And obviously he's had a few low moves as well when he was younger. But Alex Gilead, I think, gets what it means to play for Bradford City. And he's seen some good times. He's seen some not so good times. And fingers crossed the good times are coming back with two brilliant back-to-back -back wins against Wrexham and MK Dons. We all know what's going to happen though when Sutton come to Valley Parade on Saturday. But Gilead, absolutely excellent yesterday. Uh, disappointing with his booking. I think it was for descent. I know the referee wasn't particularly great yesterday. I think we got three or four bookings for descent or time wasting. I mean, Smallwood's booking for time wasting when we're 4-0 up. I think if anyone's going to be time wasting, it's going to be MK Dons to try and keep that scoreline down. The referee was making it all about himself. And if we hadn't have comfortably beaten MK Dons, he would have probably got a red box in this video because he was absolutely shocking. But yeah, disappointing with the couple descent bookings that we did pick up. And I think Gilead was one of them. But apart from that, on the whole, a very solid performance from him playing out of position. So thoroughly deserves a green box for me. Yeah, I mean, just on that spoiled one, the, the yellow card, referees do their homework on set pieces and corners. And surely he should know that Smallwood, he, he does all the time, you know, the, the fake um, cross, which, which is annoying because it, it means he don't really get the momentum behind the, behind the cross. But he, he does it all the time. He, he won't time waste. And now we miss him on Saturday and it'll probably be a big miss. It means that um, we, right I might have to go in left wing back so Gilly can go in midfield if Richard's concussion hasn't cleared up. So it, that that's a big miss for us. And Smalls had a good game and uh, a good couple of games. So, you know, and, and they were probably unlucky not to get a green box, but anyone could have got a green box this uh, this week. But yeah, Gilead, he, he just shows energy, his tenacity, um, you know, desire, loves the club, like you said, and he, he, he gets it. And if you, if you can keep, um, I, I think he just brings the team together because he's got a good personality. And when you've got players like Gilead who are showing under 10%, I think it raises everyone else's game. I think everyone else looks at him and say, right, well, I need to be showing that energy level. And if you've got your Gilead and your Allardies doing that, I think it, it raises that. So, again, great. Playing on, on the left side, it's tough to do that because he's used to, I think if he plays on the right side, doesn't he normally as, as well in, in the midfield? So it's a completely different view of, of the pitch. He comes inside on his right foot and disguises it because, you know, it looks quite obvious, but it, it's um, they don't really read it. And he's solid enough defensively as well. So you, you don't really, you don't miss Richards as well. That's, that's a big thing because he's got that athleticism to get up and down the wing. And you need that if you're playing with wing backs in Alexander's system. You need to have fit wing backs who are going to get up and down and are going to contribute going forward. Um, so, yeah, another fantastic performance from Gilead and, and again, showing what it takes to play for Bradford City. Yeah, and like you mentioned there, it's a bit of a dampener with yesterday's game with Spald coming out with his 10th booking of the season. So he now gets a two-league game ban. I think that's Son at home and Barrow away. So they're going to be two 
big losses for us in that game, unfortunately. And obviously, Richards with that concussion injury probably won't be back until probably the Barrow game. So on Saturday, you're looking at maybe Rydal in wing back with Gilead and McDonald in the midfield, but McDonald can't really play 90 minutes on Saturday, Tuesday. So this again comes back to January. I mentioned it in the sort of review video for that. We needed to get a central midfielder in on loan. Unless we're going to maybe give Freddie Jeffries an opportunity, which I think is unlikely. We don't really have any natural midfielders available at this moment in time. We've small suspended Walker and Patterson out pretty long term with their injuries it only really leaves Gilead and McDonald and while Gilead's pretty robust he has had the odd niggle so far this season and McDonald we all know he can't play Saturday Tuesday 90 minutes so I'll be interested to see how we do line up in them two games I think against Barrow we'll probably go with a midfield three because we need to compact uh come be compact and be combative against their midfield three. So I will be really interested to see how we go. Maybe you go McDonald as a sitter and then you have Gilead and someone like an Odwar or a Chapman slightly ahead of them. I'll be interested to see how it does work out. But we'll move on then to box number four. It's a green box for Andy Cook. Not only did he get a goal, which was a real striker's instinctive finish. You know, I think everyone was probably expecting Gilead to score. That's one thing I didn't actually mention there. How Gilead didn't score that header, I'll never know. He's maybe a yard, two yards away and he's hit it straight at the post, but Andy Cook is in the right place at the right time. First time finish, volleys it, half volley, whatever you want to call it, into the back of the net. But it wasn't just the goal. I thought his link-up play was excellent, considering he had a defender right up his backside. MJ Williams, for the majority of the time, was screening right in front of him. Cook won so much in the air, especially in that first half. He was pivotal to us trying to play on the counter-attack, having that long ball and having that outlet to Andy Cook. I know their centre-halves weren't the biggest, they weren't the most physical and the more traditional ball players, but they were still giving him a tough time. And MJ Williams is well over six foot. He was screening in front of him and he was winning the header against both of them as well, which was fantastic to see. He plays a big part in our second goal as well. He holds the ball up nicely and plays a beautiful pass out wide to Clark Adore. And I think the third goal as well, the ball originally comes up to Cook and he does some Andy Cook-esque manoeuvre where he makes it look like he's got more agility than Lionel Messi to spin away from three players and puts the ball out wide to Clark Adore originally and that move all comes from Andy Cook's a brilliant hold-up play and I feel like sometimes we have criticised his hold-up play so far this season about how he's got frustrated and hasn't quite impacted the game as positively as we would have liked but he got his 15th goal of the season he definitely deserves a lot of credit for his performance yesterday obviously could be on 18 goals if he scored his penalties which at this stage in the season would still be a very very good return I feel like by the end of the season or comfortably being our top 10 goal scorers of all time which is outstanding to see I think he only needs four or five more as well which is brilliant stuff and yeah he's comfortably going to get 20 goals this season if he manages to keep fit could even get 25 as well depending on if he keeps scoring four goals every week but Andy Cook yesterday absolutely outstanding and thoroughly deserves a green box for me I think he will get 25 I think he's getting that confidence now he's, he's playing with, with with that ability around him um, I think Kavanagh playing next to him helps him because it allows him to um, get the knockdowns and they're going somewhere because he knows he's got a nippy player going to be running in around him and behind him and uh, trying to create and cause a bit of havoc for the defenders, giving them some extra to think about, someone who's going to be doing a bit of um, decoy runs. Um, so, you know, I think that gives him confidence and obviously two in two. That, that alone will build that up even more. So hopefully he can keep getting chances created for him because that's that's a problem that, that we have and have had with Andy Cook. He's, he's always getting half chances. Or it's always bobbling around the penalty box and he's the quickest to react, which, you know, it's getting the ball in the right areas and that's what happened for his second goal. And we need to, we need to do that more um, to, to, to give him that confidence. But yeah, it's, um, it's certainly um, looking like he's going to keep that goal scoring record going because... It's the end of a season, and if you can get an Andy Cook playing with um, with no fear, you know, running at defenders, you know, it, it, I, I do. I think he'll get twenty five goals and get us into the playoffs. I think Andy Cook's at his best when he doesn't have time to think and everything's just instinctive. You know, you look at his goal that he scored against Wrexham, absolutely outstanding the way he just chops away from Tozer and bullies his way through a number of players and makes sure that ball goes in the back of the net. And again, last night, an instinctive finish. And you look at some of the chances that he has missed, like the penalties. You look at Stockport away where he had that one-on-one. -on -one. You know, these are t chances where he's having a lot of time to think about and... He doesn't usually do very well with them sort of chances, but ones where they just fall to him, they drop it in the box, or it's a header where you don't expect to score, or he picks the ball up, takes three players on and sticks it in the back of the net. That is when Andy Cook is at his best. So we need to try and create some more chances for him, which are more snapshot, really, rather than ones that he's got loads of time to think about, which is 
bizarre to think that you've got a striker who doesn't really score the easy chances, but certainly scores the, the much harder chances at times. But yeah, Andy Cook, not only his goal, overall play, hold up play, absolutely outstanding yesterday. Again, contributed massively, similar to Clark Adon thoroughly deserves a green box. So we'll move on then to the penultimate box of today's video. It is a green box once again, this time for Matty Platt. Absolutely outstanding. It was between him or Tomkinson for me for man of the match, but I've just gone with Matty Platt because obviously he got his goal and what a goal. I mean, has he been taking tips off of Andy Cook? Because that was one of the best finishes I've ever seen at Valley Parade. It was outstanding, but for a centre-half to be able to do that from the edge of the box. He's absolutely brilliant, obviously. Tomkinson puts the ball in and it takes a slight deflection. It comes to Platt on the edge. He takes that first touch to get out of, his, out of his feet and he shoots so quickly, it maybe catches the keeper off guard, but it just flies into the top corner. I feel like if the keeper had had 20 seconds to prepare for that, he would have never anticipated Matty Platt was wrapping that one in the top corner. I think that's his third goal now in all competitions this season, which is great to see after not scoring at all last season. But defensively, again, absolutely outstanding. Won it everything in the air. If he didn't win it in the air, he won it on the floor. He was pivotal to stopping the MK Dons attack because they had some very, very good players in there. They've got a lot of good creative players like Dan Kemp, Jack Payne, Alex Gilby. I know Kemp hasn't quite hit the ground running again at MK Dons, you know, when he's not in a Swindon shirt. Jack, uh, Dan Kemp seems to be struggling a little bit, but I thought Matty Platter was outstanding. He stopped a number of their attacks and so was Kieran Kelly. He don't get a box in today's video, but he was also outstanding. But Platt for me was the pick of the bunch and thoroughly deserves green box. He was just brilliant. There's not really much else that I could say. He was just absolutely excellent. Yeah, absolutely. He had no right to score that goal. Um, Matty Pelle, I think he should go down by us now. But um, he's um, he's becoming a real warrior at the back, you know, fighting for every duel, battling with every set st striker. And I don't feel like he, there's any striker who um, won't be in a game with, with Platt. And, you know, you look at your Ash Taylors and you think, right, big dominant centre-back, but Platt has much more to his game. Than, than Taylor, you know, it, distribution's improved recently. Playing, you know, some good switch balls out out to the flanks, and um, you, you know, he's, he's just a, a fantastic player. You know, I, I, again, you know, what what more can you say about Matty Platt from what you've you've said for the last month since he came back into a team? Begs the question why he were dropped. I think you probably say, well, was it Alexander just finding the right team? But he's found he, he's gone back to the back three, but worked. Got to keep with that. And uh, I, I'd have no doubts that, you know, we'll keep these clean sheets coming because that's four clean sheets in a row. You build your foundations at the back, you build partnerships from the back and that works its way to the front. You know, you, you trust um, has to find, find its way forward. And um, Matty Platt, you know, is, is at the centre of that and he's becoming a bit of a leader. Probably still underrated. I think there's probably still fans who look at Sam Stubbs and probably think he's probably a better player and probably should, should still be playing. And I think part of me thinks that as well. I, I think Sam Stubbs is probably unlucky not to be playing. But Matty, Matty Platt is, is, is just Mr. Consistent. And he hasn't ever put a foot wrong bar maybe two, three games, a, a couple of red cards last season where he were a bit dodgy. But apart from those games, he's just been an absolute rock. Yeah, and something that we mentioned on here before, I think you actually mentioned it, but someone gave me the credit for it on Twitter was having a consistent back three and it helps massively for the goalkeeper. I think Sam Walker was brilliant again yesterday. Having the consistent back three and for the large part, consistent wing backs. I know Gilead and Rydag will play the odd game there, but it has traditionally been Richards and obviously Halliday on the right side. The back three of Tompkins and Platt and Kelly is absolutely outstanding. Very, very few forwards and players at this level will be able to get past that that three because I think they complement each other so well. They're all absolutely excellent. If one player doesn't have an attribute, another one's got it. I think the balance in that back three is perfect. And I'm a big fan of Sam Stubbs, but I personally don't believe he's shown enough so far this season to warrant being in that team over someone like a Platt, a Tomkinson or a Kelly. Ash Taylor for me is garbage and fingers crossed we don't see him for the remainder of the season. But I hope this back three can keep themselves fit and available. You know, there's no stupid red cards or anything like that that and for me personally I think we'll be flying for the rest of the season in terms of clean sheets because Walker looks confident in goal we've got a very solid back three we've got two very very good wing backs and some other options in there as well and Brad Halliday again someone who didn't get a green box in today's video but was absolutely outstanding once again yesterday and I know we've won 4-0 and 
I feel like the scoreline maybe flattered us slightly because we didn't really have many other chances apart from that. But I'm not going to complain. The amount of times where we've come away from games thinking, how have we not won that? Or we should have scored more goals in that one. I'm definitely not going to complain. I think that's the first time we've won 4-0 since the relegation season when we beat Rochdale 4-0 away from home. So got to give the boys credit. And we'll move on then to the final box of today's video. It's a green box for Graham Alexander. He was set up in the stands again and maybe we should just keep him there all the time. If we're going to keep winning 4-0 every week, then keep him there, ban him from that touchline. I thought he got the team selection spot on. I was maybe surprised to see Kavanagh still starting. I was happy to see Chapman drop to the bench. I would have personally gone with it, Jake Young. But Alexander got that right, and that is why he makes them big decisions at the end of the day. Got the team spot on. He got the tactic spot on. Yes, we had to be patient at times. We didn't really have much of the ball. MK Dons at times passed through us like a hot knife through butter, but then they didn't really have that end product. They had a very, very blunt knife up front. You know, I think they were missing Max Dean, which is obviously a massive miss for them. But Alexander got the team selection spot on. He got the tactics spot on. I think he mentioned after about 10 minutes or so, they made a tactical tweak because they were passing through us far too easily. And obviously... At the start of the second half, when we get them two early goals, the game is pretty much done and it's just about defending and keeping the clean sheet. And they had a few half chances, did MK on some that trickled just past the post and on another day, they might have found the back of the net. But it seemed like it was our night last night and Alexander deserves credit for that. That's back-to-back -back green boxes for him and I feel like... Overall, it was a positive performance, a positive win for us, and I just hope we can build on it now. The real, the tough test out of this block of three games is genuinely Sutton at home, and that is crazy to say that second bottom at home is a tougher test than Wrexham away, who hadn't lost at home uh, more than once all season. But that is just classic Rafa City. You know, we'll go and beat Wrexham away. We'll smash MK Dons 4-0 at home. The tough test now for me is Sutton United at home on Saturday. That could be a real banana skin for us. But Graham Alexander got everything spot on yesterday, so deserves a green box. Actually, the one thing that I would slightly maybe complain about, the substitutions, when we made that triple change, I thought Percy it came a little bit too late. The boys put in a big shift on Saturday. Saturday. The game was at 4-0, so it's definitely done. We've got a big game coming up against Sutton. I'd have liked to see them subs maybe 10, 15 minutes earlier. I feel like we should have made maybe two changes at the hour mark, maybe two changes at the 70th minute, and maybe one change in the 80th minute. That's how I would have personally done it. I know Alexander sometimes can be a, a little bit stubborn with his substitutions, but thinking about fitness and fatigue and with Smallwood being suspended, I feel like we could have maybe made some subs earlier. But apart from that, I can't really complain too much. We won 4-0 at the end of the day. So Alexander, green box for me. Just on the Sutton game, I, how do you think the best way to go about breaking down a low block? Because no doubt that's how they'll pull us out. Yeah, I mean, it'll be hard for us. One thing that we can't allow is for them to get an early goal or a goal at all. We cannot give them something to sit in and defend on because they're probably going to come and they'll be happy with a point coming to Valley Parade. You know, most teams are, especially after the two results that we've just had. So they're probably going to time waste from minute one. We need an early goal. It's much easier to say that rather than to do it. I hope Odwa is getting at players and taking them on. You know, we showed last season against Sutton that at home we can easily beat them but then at times we can switch off and concede sloppy goals and I feel like Sutton we need to get some revenge after what happened in the reverse fixture losing 2-1 there was so so disappointing but yeah it'll be it'll be a hard game because Sutton like you say are going to come and sit in a low block and defend but we just got to make sure we don't concede any stupid sloppy goals especially not from set pieces or anything like that which they are a big threat from. Yeah and I, I think one thing Alexander's made us a lot more better at is just being an aggressive team it's a team that no one wants to play against and whilst, whilst you're an aggressive team you've got the foundations then to go and take that against anyone obviously we saw under Mark Hughes that we found it hard to break down a low block and we've had that against other teams when we played direct so I'm, I'm not sure what the best way about going about it is but whilst you're aggressive whilst you're a tough team to beat you can build off, off clean sheets and if you get a, a chance, which you're always going to get a chance and you've got Andy Cook up front, you can sort of bank on him maybe putting it away. Um, and, and you, you know, I, I think the overloads we were creating against MK Dons down the flanks as well, if you can try and keep doing that, because we, we did that with a 5-3-2 that we were playing when we had Walker and Gilead on either side of the midfield, you know, getting into the uh, wide areas in, in the box and pulling it back across. If we can keep doing that, I, I think you know that there's a way to then break down a team like a son yeah i would uh definitely agree with that but um Four 0 win. It's very, very rare that we come in here and we give six green boxes out. I think it's only happened maybe one or two times this season. It was just a, a brilliant, brilliant win. And I hope we can keep being clinical. I hope we can keep taking our chances, creating a lot of more chances as well. And I hope Andy Cook keeps firing it in to the back of the net. Shame about the uh, MK Dons goalkeeper 
I think he launched the uh, the Bradford City GoPro that had been put in the goal at, at full time. So he's a bit of a, a crybaby, Nathan Harness. But um, we'll leave it there then for today's video. Thank you very much for tuning in once again. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for us. If you could turn it 80 likes. As we said at the start of today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers. So please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so. And it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below on our six talking points from today's video. That being Jonathan Tompkinson, Clark Adore, Alex Gilead, Andy Cook, Matty Platt and Graham Alexander. Obviously, we can only give six green boxes. We could have given more as well and definitely could have given a red one to the referee. Go check out yesterday's match day vlog as well if you haven't already. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you very soon for another one. Peace.